Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another Astro Chat episode. Today we're going to take a look at Rahu in Taurus part two. Now you might be wondering where is part one? Was there a part one? There was and I'll link to it above. It was the most recent Astro Chat episode I did which was called Lies, Lies, Lies. Where is the truth? Okay and that was where I really explored Rahu in Taurus. And today I'm going to continue exploring Rahu and Taurus because I had a couple of extra insights which I thought I would share with you. Before I do that, I've got a couple of small housekeeping matters that I want to attend to. One is the September Outlook. Some of you have been asking me, where is the September Outlook? I really want it. It's on the way. I have been so busy this week and I completed the big healing work that I was doing. And because of that, I had a couple of really late nights and it's kind of pushed everything back. So the September Outlook, I'm going to be recording that on Monday evening. So I think that's Monday the 30th of August and I'll launch it on the 31st of August. So it's still in the month of August that I'm launching it. It is very late, but it is on the way. So hang out for that. That's coming emails if you've written me an email um, please know that i'm definitely going to get back to you so again hang tight it's all good uh, and if you've booked me for a reading i'm totally on time and on track so don't you worry about that my priority this is why something like a september outlook will be delayed it means i've got client work client work i will not be late on that so that's absolutely fine so if you've booked me for a reading I'm spot on time for you uh, and I just wanted to say that I'm going to be opening bookings again next week and you will be able to book from next week onwards. Right so let's get into the topic of Rahu in Taurus. Let's keep chatting about this uh, this energy which is so important. Now the thing that I wanted to cover here is just in relation to money and how money is in a big process of change and will be until I think it was March 2022 that I said Rahu's going to shift and move into Aries. So when we're looking at Rahu, so as I say Taurus, in this episode I really want to look at money. That's the, that's the thing that I want to look at here. And with Rahu, what are we looking at here as an energy? So Rahu, you can interpret this as being something different or something unique. You know, if you've got Rahu conjunct a planet or wherever Rahu is in your chart that's going to indicate an area where you might be different or you might be unique. It might be something quite stand out about you. Uh, the other thing is that Rahu can represent things that are extreme and Rahu can also represent things that are foreign but also things that are digital. So let's take a look at the three areas that I want to cover today. I want to talk about how Rahu in Taurus when it comes to money means that we'll have different ways of spending. I'm going to look at money addiction and I'm going to look at new systems of money or new systems of exchange. So let's begin with the first section which is different ways of spending money. I think one of the things that we're all discovering right now is that perhaps the way we interact with money has changed. I know for me personally I you know was in England uh, before all of this change has happened and um, I'd have a debit card and I would go to supermarkets and I would sometimes have some cash which I would spend at a farmer's market. These days what I'm finding is because of Saturn in Capricorn, Saturn in Capricorn has shut down a lot of businesses. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert some footage here of me just walking around my local mall and you'll see just how many businesses are shut down just how unusual this is, just what an extraordinary time. I have never seen this mall so quiet. It's very eerie as you walk around there. It's, it's quite strange and all the businesses have been forced to shut down. I do believe that is Saturn in Capricorn. But I also think it's got a little something to do with Rahu in Taurus because there's instability with money and money is, is going to change over the course of this time. Right through till March 2022 we're going to have big changes in money so we're going to see that we spend money in different ways. So me as an example I barely go to this mall that I've just shown you, I've probably just shown you some footage. Um, I barely go there now 
and what I do is I just take my little uh, you know cloth shopping bag and I go to my small local places and I just use a little bit of cash so I've definitely changed in terms of how I spend money uh, it, it's totally different it, it's very different now it's a whole different life um, the next section I wanted to look at was just to look at Rahu in Taurus in relation to money to look at the concept of money addiction so this is when we're looking at Rahu as an extreme energy. Rahu can be very extreme. Rahu is the head without the body. Rahu is that head that wants to consume the nectar, that's never satisfied. It just eats, eats, eats. So one of the things about Rahu in, well, Rahu having a connection with Venus, okay? So this is a Rahu-Venus thing. So this could be Rahu conjunct Venus. This could be Rahu in Taurus, this could be Rahu in Libra, something along those lines. You will notice that such people will experience some kind of addiction in their life, okay? Uh, and it, it, you don't have to have this placement to experience addiction. I think every human being has to deal with addiction of some kind. I think society has conditioned everyone to have some form of addictive personality. I'll give you an example, a small example from my life, which is, yeah, I've told you guys about this one before. I used to love having my little coffee every day. I used to do that all the time. And it was something very difficult to get out of. Now, now I don't particularly have Rahu uh, conjunct Venus or Rahu in a Venus sign. But those people who do have Rahu conjunct Venus or in a, in a Venusian sign, they are likely to have some connection with addiction, I do think, um, more pronounced than others. And I'll give you a famous example. That's Elizabeth Taylor. Rahu conjunct Venus, I believe in her fifth house of romance. Venus is exalted. And this is the lady who got married, was it six times? Something like that, I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. But you, know, you can see there that she was addicted to to romance to falling in love you know um, marriage wouldn't have been too exciting for her that's the commitment of the seventh house that's very saturnian that's a bit boring you know she, she loved the sun and venus and the thrill and, and all that beautiful stuff and, and so she wasn't doing anything wrong she she was just living out kind of her destiny i suppose you know um, by following those impulses it's really interesting but this thing of money addiction, we can look at our world today and we can see that there are some people at the very top. So we're going Saturn and Capricorn here, the very top, 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 you know, the 1% of the 1%, however top you want to go. There are certain people in our world who are just absolutely addicted to money to the point that they, that's their number one priority, you know, the number one value, that's the number one thing. And they will put that above human health and human beings and human life. You know, things like Monsanto wanting to tamper with the seeds. Why? Because it's great for profits, you know, and all that kind of madness that's going on. So we do have that in our collective at the moment. And the third thing I wanted to talk about, I'll just touch on it very quickly. And that is the possibility of new systems of exchange. Okay, so where Rahu is, we, so as I mentioned, you know, Rahu can be foreign things, it can also be digital things. Okay, so wherever Rahu is, you can see that, you can look at that in terms of digital, right? So there could be new digital currencies that are currently being formed or that are currently being looked at that are going to be proposed to the mainstream masses. That is a thing that can happen before March 2022. And I was just doing some reading earlier this afternoon about this thing. It's called a, I think, a quantum financial system, something like that. I don't know much about this. I've read 50% of articles saying it's a terrible, awful thing. I've read 50% of people saying, oh, this could be something new. This could be the answer to some problems, something like that. But what I am seeing is that we've got a huge amount of destruction around finance and that's Saturn Pluto in Capricorn at this time. So there's a massive amount of destruction around finance. And I think where Rahu is, I think there's got to be a little light, a little bit of 
what is the future? A little bit of growth, maybe a little bit of a signal of, of where we might be going. And it's fascinating. It's a fascinating world right now. Uh, if we can look at it without judgment, if we can observe without getting too involved, if we can maintain a spiritual practice at this time, you know, if we can, definitely observing without judgment. Krishnamurthy had a beautiful quote. He said, I think, and I'll put a thing on the screen if I get it wrong, but it's something like, to observe without judgment is the highest form of intelligence. And I really love that quote for now. But guys, I'm going to leave this video here. The September outlook is on the way. Thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.